British Medical Journal today shows just how popular they are. Over 50% of young people eat burgers at least once a week, compared with only 5% of old people. And they don't seem worried about any risks. If they're in the shops, they must be safe, so I just eat them. I don't really care about the warnings. I just eat it. I don't, I don't worry about the warnings. I just get on with it. There's no proof that CJD, the human equivalent of BSE, can be caused by eating beef products. But researchers in Cambridge have shown that the pattern of young people eating burgers is consistent with that theory. We've just looked at eating patterns of different beef products and we've shown that there are some beef products which are eaten more frequently by the young than the old, so that by saying this builds up a consistent picture of how the disease might have developed in the population. We in no way at all claim that this demonstrates as a relationship. The CJD surveillance unit in Edinburgh says today's figures show CJD cases have increased since the 70s. But that's probably because doctors are better at spotting these cases, not a real increase. They do, however, point to the new kind of CJD that can be spotted under the microscope, which they think is related to young people eating BSE-infected meat, but many years ago. There have now been 21 of these cases, and this really is a very unusual finding. And uh, it's very important to stress that with one exception of one case in France, these cases seem to be only occurring in the United Kingdom. And we think that in the absence of any other explanation, it is quite likely that they are linked in some way to BSE. But they don't think the fact that dairy farmers seem to be more susceptible is linked to BSE. The figures that I've seen don't give cause for concern. The incidence is, to quote the report, extremely low. Uh, and furthermore, there appears to be no correlation whatsoever with BSE. Most reassuring of all is that the number of new cases of CJD is not rising rapidly. This year has seen only a trickle. But it's still too early to say whether there will be a major epidemic or not. Lawrence McGinty, ITN. Well, staying with food and health, the report out today by the animal welfare group Compassion in World Farming warns that it's not just the BSE crisis that's threatening food safety. They say factory farming is putting public health at risk, with cases of food poisoning rising fourfold in the last ten years. Their survey found salmonella in one in three chilled raw chickens. The diarrhoea-causing bug Campylobacter in almost half of all fresh chickens and the E. coli bug in a quarter of all raw sausages. Well, joining me now is Dr. Tim O'Brien, the author of that report, and John Pratt from the Meat and Livestock Commission. Dr. O'Brien, a pretty sorry state of affairs. Uh, where do you point the finger of blame? Finger of blame is pointed by Compassion in World Farming at the insanitary and overcrowded conditions on the UK's factory farms. For example, in broiler chicken sheds, thousands of animals are crowded together, so, so much so that you can scarcely see the floor of the, of the shed. Animals are forced to stand and lie in their own excrement, and they have no access to natural daylight, fresh air, and the outdoors. This is a recipe for a disaster, and we see it in the high levels of contamination in chicken and in other products that you've just spoken about. Well, let's put this straight to Mr. Pratt from the Meat and Livestock Commission. John Pratt, do you accept these findings? And if you do, why aren't you doing anything about it? Well, lots has been done, in fact. Uh, it's under legislation and under codes of practice right from the production of animals right through to the meat on one's plate so everything is being improved all of the time well not, it's not been improved much if food poisoning has gone up 400 percent well i think that's better diagnosis better reporting and uh, admittedly it has gone up but of course we can't get rid of some of these organisms they're in the gut of animals and of course they're in the gut of man so it's not possible at all actually to remove them entirely in fact it would be a very unusual set of circumstances if we removed all bacteria dr o'brien do you accept that the producers are doing all they can to stamp this out this kind of complacency is just not good enough animals are suffering and food poisoning in england and wales has increased sixfold in the last 15 years meantime countries like sweden have virtually eradicated salmonella from their poultry flock They've improved farm animal welfare conditions there, and at the same time, they've vastly reduced their dependence on antibiotics, which themselves have human health implications. Well, just let me give the last word there to Mr. Pratt. Then other countries have done it. Why can't we? Well, we're not quite as far on as he's saying. Sweden, I was speaking to a Swede only yesterday in Denmark, 
and he did admit that the eradication of salmonella is impossible, but they are fairly well down the road. We are looking at pigs, because I just cover pigs, cattle and sheep. We are looking at pig salmonella, but in actual fact, we have to find out the figures to see, in fact, if some of Mr. Dr. O'Brien's figures are correct. Mr. Pratt, Dr. O'Brien, thank you both very much. The American Watchdog, the National Audit Office. The report concludes this and 21 other projects were delayed by more than three years in some cases. The Ministry of Defence is taken to task for failing to monitor reliability. The report also says that two assault vessels, HMS Intrepid and HMS Fearless, are in a poor state of repair. Again, questions have been raised about Whitehall's ability to keep costs under control and the forces adequately equipped. We can never quite get as efficient as procuring a fridge or a motor car or whatever because defence procurement is more complex. But we can undoubtedly do a great deal better. Does this report not reflect badly on your party after 18 years in office? No, I don't think it does. We took a lot of steps to try and uh, be more efficient in procurement, uh, improving the competitive uh, tendering. Labour ministers have put procurement at the heart of their defence review with a commitment to getting things better. A Defence Ministry spokesman said in some cases the report was going over old ground, looking at projects going back over a number of years, and that it certainly wasn't the case that frontline forces had been left vulnerable as a result of delays. But ministers acknowledge the report provides valuable lessons as they try to come to terms with the complexities of defence procurement. QPIM ITN at the Ministry of Defence. Detectives have launched a murder hunt after finding the body of a woman dressed only in her nightie weighted down in one of Britain's deepest lakes. They admit they've no idea who she is or how long her body had been languishing in Coniston Water in the Lake District. They believe she could have been there for as long as 25 years. Linda Kennedy reports. The quest for clues goes on, but police are still baffled by the case of the body in the lake. It's that of a woman. Her wrists had been bound, her body placed in a bag, weighed down with rocks to keep it on the bed of Coniston Water. There it stayed until a pleasure trip organised by local divers. What they found was a figure so badly decomposed, establishing its identity has so far been impossible. But what may provide the most crucial clue is her attire, a 1960s style nightdress. Police believe the body may have lain there for decades. Our main priority must be to identify who the lady is. Uh, we are checking our own uh, missing person files. We're checking all the police forces in England, Wales and Scotland and have circulated a description of, of, of the lady and hopefully we'll get something back from that. This is a lake of many old mysteries. Almost ten years ago, another search found the headless remains of a man. And it's also where Donald Campbell died, trying to break the world speed record. His body has never been found. Today, the case of the lady in the lake has drawn attention of police forces across the country, wondering if this body could be linked with any of their unsolved murder mysteries. Linda Kennedy, ITN. Now, for many people, the hot and humid weather has been proving uncomfortable in more ways than one. Aside from the heat, it's also brought out millions of midges and mosquitoes. Earlier I spoke to Professor Chris Curtis from the London School of Hygiene and asked him if there was more of a problem with mosquitoes this year than usual. I think it's fairly normal in, in August uh, when the weather's fairly warm and also when, when there's been some rain to provide uh, breeding places for mosquitoes to, to have them around. I'm not sure that it's any worse this year than a normal August. Do you think it's just that people have been sleeping with their windows open and their it, limbs yes. out of bed? And yes, that, I, that way I've, I've noticed uh, five or ten uh, what we call Culex mosquitoes coming into our house uh, in London because we've been keeping the garden door open and so after dark they're flying around and they come in towards the light. What is it about some people that makes them more of a target for mosquito than others? Um, it's not really known, surprisingly enough. Um, it's true that uh, people do vary. They, people also vary very greatly in the way they react to mosquito bites. I mean, some people, like me, can feed mosquitoes on my arm and get no reaction at all and others uh, itch for days and so I think the bigger difference is in the way people react, but it is true that uh, if you count the numbers biting people, they do vary to some degree. Now, in the old days, of course, the dangers were of malaria, but do we have to worry about that these days? Uh, not in England, no. Of course, in uh, especially tropical Africa, it's a, a major killer, but in, in England, uh, malaria was here until about the time of the First World War, but it, it then died out. And uh, apart from malaria brought back by travellers, and that does occur, about 2,000 cases are brought back a year.
but there's absolutely no transmission by mosquitoes in England, so one doesn't have to worry about mosquitoes from that point of view at all. So really, apart from the inconvenience and the unsightly after effects, there's no reason really to fear being bitten by a, a mosquito? No. no. I mean, uh, as you imply, some people do react really quite badly to, to bites, and they do itch for a long time, but um, they're not going to get any, any disease from, from mosquitoes in England. Professor Curtis, thank you very much indeed. After the joy and tears of yesterday's A-level results, students across the country were today trying to sort out their futures. The increase in the pass rate and the government's decision to introduce tuition fees from next year has meant added pressure in the scramble for university places. Terry Lloyd reports. Hello, um, I'm learning about the linguistics degree. The um, waiting came to an end yesterday for thousands um, of disappointed students who failed to make the grade. The search began today to find university places. Frantic calls went through to UCAS the university clearinghouse which finds vacancies for students who've had to change their plans because they did not get the results they'd hoped for. I'd originally applied to do nursing with the thought of doing midwifery after nursing but because obviously I couldn't because I didn't have the grades I went straight into midwifery and um, I'm going for an interview tomorrow so fingers crossed it'll be okay. Others were forced into radical career changes focusing on very different futures. I didn't get, quite get my grades for optometry at Bradford so um, I rang around a couple of places and um, I eventually got a place at actually Bradford doing automotive engineering. Teachers were on hand today to offer comfort and advice to those facing an uncertain future. It's very difficult for them but um, at first they're unhappy about it and quite a few of them are very upset but all isn't lost. There are places available through clearing and at school we are able to help them with that. But many found telephone lines engaged as students chased the 24,000 places available. It's just packed. Terry Lloyd, ITN. Now to an older age group, the largest ever gathering of centenarians, people who've reached the...